<laughs> Welcome to the cult classic horror show. Every week, you can have the conversations you've always wanted to have about the films you love. Shut up! Get rid of your distractions and prepare yourself you got a big surprise coming to you. <laughs> You're not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome everybody to the Cult Classic Horror Show. My name is Ty Andrako, and on the line today I have Brooklyn Ewing, who uh, was the director, cinematographer, uh, basically a Jane of all trades uh, within her new horror film, uh, She Was So Pretty, uh, Sh Be Good For Goodness Sake. Uh, that's the subtitle. Uh, this is the sequel to She Was So Pretty 2016, uh, a film that I got to view after um, after a recent film festival, uh, Gross Fest in Washington, Pennsylvania. Uh, so, let's see. Brooklyn, thank you for being on the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Uh so your your um your film She Was So Pretty. We're gonna focus on that to start with. Um, won some awards at the Nightmare Film Festival. Um, let's see what do we got here? Uh, best cinematography feature or no? Excuse me. Uh, best director feature. Yes. That's impressive. <laughs> it kind of blew my mind, honestly. I I was like, well, <clears throat> that's an honor, and I don't know why I deserve it. So it's taken me a couple of years to figure out why. <laughs> well, uh, but it's pretty exciting. I was, I was blown away. I cried, you know, it was pretty, pretty crazy. Well, well, you deserved it. I, I, you know, I can't say enough good things about she was so pretty. Um, Thank you. Just to, uh, do, do you want to go over the premise just briefly? And then um, maybe we'll uh, talk uh, about some things more specifically as you go along. Sure. Um, she was so pretty is was based around an idea that I had that um, as people, we walk around in the world and we don't really think about the people that uh, are close to us all day long. Um, so just people that bump into you or, you know, are, are riding a bus or, you know, at, at a mall shopping next to you. We don't really notice them as much as we should, I don't think. Um, and a lot of that really frightens me because I've had a lot of weird experiences. So, um, the premise of she was so pretty, uh, follows the, the story of a girl who's, uh, doing her everyday things, but this, this man, um, Alfie, he keeps showing up everywhere and we get to kind of watch that, uh, play out and she's not noticing, but as the viewer, we are. So it's kind of the story of, you know, um, what happens when you aren't paying attention to your surroundings. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, um, you, you wrote, you wrote this, correct? Um, yes. And it's, it is very, we use the word wrote very loosely. Um, I, I wrote a basic idea of what I wanted it to be. Um, and then a lot of the, um, dialogue and things, it was all improv from my friends, uh, yeah. because I knew if I wrote lines, they would sound terrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're preaching to the choir on that. Writing dialogue terrible. It's a, yeah. it's it's awful. <laughs> yeah. Uh it never seems believable, does it, when you write it? No, and it's it's tough because most of the people I worked with were just my friends and had little to no acting experience. So, um, you know, we wanted it to sound natural at least. If we could get anything out of it, <laughs> at least it would sound like something they would actually say. So, from the from the um from the way you talk about the film, you give the impression that it is kind of, um, kind of raw, kind of, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know exactly how I want to put it. Uh, but I, um, I have to tell you for, for somebody that 
had zero budget. Um, you're working with, like you said, people that aren't exactly professional uh, actors. Um, it's it's still haunting, and uh, and a lot of that I believe comes from um, Alfie in the background, but also how you sort of just you you you, you put it. Um, you know, you see these people in, in the world. You just followed one of these strangers one day, and where where it led you to is is is, is creepy. So, uh, uh, Alfie, played by uh, Jerry Larue, correct? Yes. Yes. Um, he plays the 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 stalker in the background, and and he mm-hmm. and um, how <laughs> how you guys framed him was always, uh, you know, sometimes. It's almost like where's Waldo at sometimes. Uh, right. The hot dog stand scene. Mm-hmm. It took me. It took me a minute, but I was like, "Oh, he's there. I see him now." <laughs> <laughs> um, so tell me a little bit about uh, Jerry. Um, Jerry and I met because he um, he was in a band that I did photographs for, uh, and he noted we met at my house and. He noted that he loves horror movies and that like I had a lot of cool stuff. And so I was like, hey, you want to watch a movie sometime? So we started hanging out. And I actually thought he might be a serial killer because um, yeah. <laughs> he was very strange. He's a very weird guy when you first meet him. Um, <laughs> so I, I wrote the short story after he left that night after we watched the movie. <laughs> and I was like, These, this guy's going to either murder me or be the coolest guy I've ever met. So um, we kept hanging out, and I finally got the guts to show him what I was writing. And uh, he loved it. And I said, do you want to make this a movie? Do you want to, like, shoot this and have some fun? And he was like, hell yeah. So turns out he's actually not a murderer, uh, and he's just a really cool guy. And then we started dating. So. Oh, it's a love story. <laughs> yeah, it's all romance. Yeah, I watched I watched the film with my I watched the film with my girlfriend and I I, I believe that I uh, at one point said he looks like Marilyn Manson without makeup on. A lot of people tell him that he gets that uh, very frequently. It's I mean it was jawbreaker. Like <laughs> it, if you put a porn mustache on him, it would have been identical. But uh, he he's haunting, and that I think that line um, uh, '70s vinyl. Yeah. Oh my God, I loved it. I just, I just, I, I fell in love with his character right then and there, and he became the hero of the film at that point. I don't want to give too much away, you know. Right. I don't, I don't think that's, I don't think that's too revealing. No. But, uh, but, uh, yeah, you know, it, it's kind of like in Jurassic Park when you find out that the T Rex is the hero, you know. Right. You know. <laughs> um. Uh. So, uh, where, where was this filmed? Um. Most of it was filmed in Parkersburg, West Virginia, um, but we did step in to um, Norton, West Virginia as well, which is a super tiny, small town. Uh, we had some friends there. They run like a, a basement venue at their house. They're like a, a family mm-hmm. <laughs> and they love rock and roll music. So they host like all these amazing bands. And um, that's how we met them. They had uh, Jerry's band play. And uh, they were like, hey, we have a really cool cabin if you need anything for your movie. And I was like, oh, my God, mm-hmm. I don't. But now I'm writing a cabin. And because mm-hmm. <laughs> it's amazing. And um, they were so great. They helped us out through filming. And we're just like the coolest people, like lugging all of our crap up, up this mountain because none of our cars would make it. Because it's, of course, you know, in the mountains. And they were the coolest people. So shooting shooting with them was great and that location was probably my favorite uh, Norton is a really cool little little area that's where that big quarry was too uh-huh yeah that they visited oh where they uh where they run into um Chris Parsons <laughs> character for yes. the first time yes yes um so you, you you did touch on the fact that a lot of this was uh was improv oh yeah um can I, uh, I to to quote the film? He refers to Valerie's character as Summer's Eve. Yes. I, g- genius inspired. Uh, for our <laughs> for for our listeners that don't know, because not every not every guy will know what Summer's Eve is. It, right. It's, it's a it's a feminine hygiene um product. Uh, yeah. So at any rate, yeah. Coll- uh, it took me a minute actually, because I yeah, but. Like when it rung, it resonated in my head and like collapsed in laughter. It was 
<laughs> inspired. <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny because they actually really didn't like each other. Um, and so a lot of that were things that he really felt about her, which made it, um, even more tense. Yeah. Um, you know, he, well, that's, he, they that, were, that's method acting at its finest, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he came up with all that stuff himself and he, um, he's not the nicest, <laughs> no. uh, but he's very funny. And the, so we appreciated it very much, but yeah, he definitely said some things that he meant in some of that, which I think made it work. Oh, definitely. Now you mentioned that you, you, you were, a, you are a big horror fan. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah, for sure. And was his uh, wardrobe at all inspired by uh, John Saxon's character in a nightmare on Elm street? 100%. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> I've had tan jacket. I that, love it. That tan jacket's incredible. I love that jacket. And then I found it. Cause we obviously we Goodwill hunted for most of it and found things for like a quarter at yard sales. But the minute I found it, I was like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. It is. It is. And, you know, those nods, those nods to genre fans don't go overlooked. I mean, it, it gives you credibility. You know, in today's day and age, if you can't get a if you can't get a Linnea Quigley or a uh, Heather Langenkamp or, or a Beth Buckley, you get as many horror references in there as you can. Sure. And even in, uh, you know, even in even in something, um, even in, in some films where they have those those names to fall back on they're still they're still using the vocabulary of horror of 80s horror predominantly absolutely yes it uh it makes it makes it stand out and you know it's 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 a little wink to the fans like hey we're in this together you know right <laughs> ah amazing so um let's see what else did i want to talk about uh valerie um who uh, Summer's Eve. You should have put her in the credits <laughs> as Summer's. No. Uh, Whitley Flynn. Now, yeah. where where did you find Whitley? Um, you know what I I met Whitley. Uh, she she answered a a casting call that I put out for photo shoots. Um, I was looking to work with girls who wanted to do really crazy horror photo shoots and recreate some scenes based on some of my favorite horror movies. And she actually answered the call to do a, the character from Martyrs. Okay. <laughs> so I knew that she was down for whatever. Uh, because I, I was like, you know that you're going to be like covered in blood, basically, and like beaten. Um, you know, and she was like, yeah, it sounds great. She's like, I'm there. <laughs> and she was so cool about it because she actually was, she was only um, 18 when I met her and her mom dropped her off at the shoot. And uh, the shoe was in an old beat up house that we, um, a friend let us use uh, that was just basically falling apart. And her mom dropped her off and drove down the street and just like sat down there and was like, if if something bad happens, text me and I'll come back and get you. Like, mm -hmm. and, but Willie was so chill about it. She didn't, she was so excited to just do something horror related. And um, we became friends after that and did tons and tons of photo shoots together. And when I started making this, I thought to myself, like, I have to write something for her. And she has these crazy expressive eyes. Um, and, uh, oh, no, my dog is going to freak out. <laughs> <laughs> she has these crazy expressive eyes that I, like, I don't know. I just was like, I have to write things related to her eyeballs because I know that she'll deliver. Yeah, um particularly whenever uh whenever she 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 has that strung out look like, you know, it's just completely exhausted at this point in, in the kitchen. Um there was like there was a there was a vacancy and yet a presence at the same time and that sounds so pretentious, but you know, it it came through. Ah, it came through on the screen for sure. Right. So the um the opening montage um if if you know that's probably the best way to uh refer to it um was that shot in a in a single night or, or over multiple nights i mean there were a lot of it seemed like there were a lot of locations but you know that you know i've 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 come to learn that the movie the movie magic sometimes uh 
can help you along there. We shot over a lot of weekends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, everybody that was working on it, everybody had real jobs. Um, so it was a lot of the the anything shot at the cabin and at the quarry. That was all one really wild long day. Because <laughs> uh, you know we had to bring everybody out there, and it was a lot of setup. And um, so that was a long day, but everything else we shot over many weekends. It took us probably a total of a good four months to get everything we needed uh, from everybody because people just couldn't get time off or, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to point out the fact that uh, you're, you are a professional photographer, correct? Yes. And uh, that, that also shows a lot in... Um, in some of the scenes there there were a few that I noted that I wanted to point out in particular one is um when Alfie's walking down the street and the uh the light flares I believe there's like a red light and uh, a white light behind him mm -hmm. and like as he steps in front of them um he blots them out uh, now can you how exactly is something like that achieved is there water on the lens is um I mean, could you go into some of the the, techni the technical aspects of shooting something like that? You know what? A lot of people, I think, work too hard for, for a lot of that stuff. Uh, honestly, every day of my life, <laughs> I look at lighting. I look at um, what things look like when I drive through my own city. Uh -huh. um, and that's actually outside my house. <laughs> so oh. it's a spot that I know really well. <laughs> gotcha. Um and I had always thought like this is the perfect place. I use I use just a, a, a 50 millimeter lens, a prime, uh, on my shitty little Nikon D3100. <laughs> um, and honestly, it was uh, the I knew that the light flares were gonna pop off because um, uh, God, I can't think of words right now. <laughs> no, I knew that it was gonna pop off because that night. It was extremely dark, and it was uh, it had been raining a little bit, mm -hmm. um, and so I knew that the conditions were going to be just right. So we ran outside and we filmed that scene. It was so off the cuff, like we shot so much of this vigilante. So it was yeah. a lot like, holy crap, it looks great. Grab the camera, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or drag a bunch of people out to a cabin like John Waters, yeah. and then take their ride away. Yes. That's how he used to do it. Gorilla, gorilla <laughs> filmmaking. Uh, you know. It's the only way for me, you know. Um, with part two, I got a lot more organized and it made me very miserable. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you only want to do horror films? I mean... Uh, you know, I have a I have a spot in my heart for um, things like John Waters and other kitschy stuff like um, Harmony Corinne, uh, any kind of gummo type stuff, teenagers with skateboards dramas and thrillers kind of things i'll probably end up in that like weirdo realm at some point yeah oh but, definitely definitely but uh horror is where my heart is i mean that's you're that's gonna end up you're gonna end up being the female boss lerman <laughs> yes i'll take it mm -hmm. now there's a definite style there that um uh, I, you know i watch a lot of independent horror um you know whether people send it to me or or um or whether I go to cons and, or, or film festivals, like how I met you, um, albeit briefly, um, when things, when things pop out at, at me, you know, um, and, and force my hand in calling the filmmaker and it's like, I just want to talk to you, you know, it, at that <laughs> yeah. point, you know, uh, that's when I know, you know, that's when I know that somebody has something very special. Um, so let's talk a little bit about um you have a uh what is it a an anthology in the works tales from the creep can yeah. you uh can you tell us a little bit about that um yes so after i made she was so pretty one and two i kind of felt like people people were starting to feel like we were one trick ponies so i was like how can i prove <laughs> To the world that I'm capable of all kinds of all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, everybody that I'd met at all these film festivals kept saying, oh, let's all get together and do an anthology. You know, you write one, I'll write one. And I kept getting in these groups with them. And then 
it would just fade away. And I was like, okay, so I guess I'm going to do an anthology by myself. I was like, I've been writing all these different stories for all these different anthologies people wanted me to be a part of that never happened. So I was like, how can I tie all of them together and make them a unit? And so that's what I did. I was like, I'm going to create this world. It's going to be like a little bit like Erie, Indiana or Goosebumps um, for adults. <laughs> gotcha. um, so it all kind of happens in the same universe. And it's called Tales from the Crete because Alfie is going to be the, you know, um, introduction to each, yeah, to yeah. each kind of story. Oh, that's awesome. Because I was like, I don't want to give up on this character because people are really into him. He's kind of, you know, got his little tiny fan base. Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. Without a doubt. And, yeah. So I was like, what if I just let him be the person that, you know, kind of segues each film? Oh. And so um, that's why we went with Tales from the Creep, because everyone calls him the Creep. So <laughs> I was like, that's the perfect name. And I just wanted to tell all these stories and, you know, shoot them all so that people can see. I don't just shoot like really um, artsy, fartsy, <laughs> thriller, horror. You know, I want to show more gore. I want to get more wild and weird and violent. And I want to do some fun stuff with laughs. And, you know, I want to show a little bit of, you know, that we can do a little bit of everything. Well, I, I think, uh, you know, um, I, I know I mentioned the the cinematography of the film but i do want to mention that it it, it is funny um it's not like as you referred to it as artsy farty i i i always call it art house it it is art house but it's good art house you thank know? you thank uh, you it it falls in a weird spot i think <laughs> oh that well yeah it has its you know you, you've carved out your own little niche um so that's tales from the creep and and uh you're currently in the early production process uh um so she was so pretty and she was so pretty be good for goodness sake you um where can our fans find it okay right now sadly we're in a we're in a weird place where uh, we're taking down a lot of the sales. You can still buy DVD, boot, what we call our bootleg copy, because basically we turn them out at our own house. Uh-huh. Um, you can find those on our website starting tomorrow, and that's shewassoprettycom And that'll it's going to be a bundle package, 20 bucks with shipping, and you get uh, the DVD plus a poster and some other little goodies for your trouble. <laughs> so tomorrow, that's August 13th. Yes. Okay. So August 13th, and it was SheWasSoPretty.com. Yes. And we'll have VHS for sale and a few other items. Mm. And we also have, like, a custom Alfie figure that we're offering as well. So those oh. will be available there, too. That's great. That's great. So, um, well, I got. I have to thank you for taking the time to speak with me. Uh, uh, I'm going to make sure. I'm just going to check my notes one more time because I'm unprofessional. Uh <laughs> No, that's it. all right. Well, okay. So Brooklyn Ewing, uh, I'm gonna, uh, you know, I'm gonna keep an eye out. I'm sure you're gonna have some, um, some, some great stuff. I, I can't wait to see Tales from the Creep, and uh, I actually have not seen She Was So Pretty. Be good for goodness' sake, uh, yet. So we're gonna need to have to talk after this and find me a copy somehow. <laughs> well, there are tons of screenings coming up in the next three months that are just about everywhere. So. Okay. We've only announced four, but there will be tons more. All right. Well, that sounds good. Thank you again for taking the time to um, take time to speak with us. Um, to speak with us. I really appreciate that. Sure. Thanks for having me. This was super fun. Awesome. All right. Um, well, thank you very much. We'll see you next time. All right. Thanks. Bye. Don't you blame the movies. Movies don't create psychos. Movies make psychos more creative. <laughs> Oh, yes. There will be blood. <laughs>